Hey, how you doing? I'm Kurt Steinmetz, and uh, we're gonna check out my board quiver today for surfboardline.com. Check it out. In general, I think people collect surfboards because it, it, it's like anything. It reminds them of a certain time or a, uh, a certain era, you know. Um, it, it, it makes them think of that time when they were younger. For me, when I see like the Shroffs and the Hurleys and the polka dots and the checkers, you know, the, the Echo Beach stuff, I can remember surfing like at 36th and 28th Street and smelling cloves, cigarettes, and, and I'm stoked. And it, and it brings me pleasure and, and it brings up stories, surf stories, and if it strikes some sort of chord of memory with me, and that's what it's all about. I started collecting boards on accident because um, I've always been a pseudo artist and so I started airbrushing all my own boards. Every, every board I, I air sprayed was, was a work of art to me and I, so I kept it and then they had memories because I had traveled to South Africa or wherever and so I kept those boards. And then I had a, a deep fascination with lightning bolt surfboards. I was fascinated with the designs, the stingers, the, the glass on fins and the color, the resin tints and so I started collecting those. So all of a sudden these lightning bolts were just popping up in trash cans and not even garage sales. So I started like pulling like just 70 boards out of the trash probably like in I'd say like 1989. I had, was fortunate enough I saved most of my 80s boards, all my old Hurleys and so I just had this building collection and then that kind of evolved into more collecting and then I stopped because I was just over it and um, and then I met another friend, a buddy of mine, Kevin, who started pulling out boards every time we go surfing, and he was pulling out Sean Thompson boards, and, and I was just freaking, you know, like, oh, here's a rabbit board, and it just, like, jogged that memory again, and I was like, oh my god, like, I don't have a rabbit board, and I don't have a MR, you know, and it was like, I gotta start collecting these things. So I just started picking it up again, and I went just kind of nutty on it, and, you know, I've slowed down now because I honestly don't have any room. So... So the boards I'm going to show you uh, that were always really dear to me that I collected were Hurley surfboards uh, for two reasons. They were like, for me growing up in Huntington, they were like the raddest boards and they had the IPD logo, International Pro Design, that always looked like the public image sign, so we thought that was kind of punk rock. Um, this was my first custom Hurley and I, I didn't know Bob at the time, but I, so I got it through Surfside Sports. and. Um, I, I told him to air spray it. I'm not sure if Ron quickly air sprayed this one or not, but I had a, I wanted him to do like a Martin Potter style because Martin Potter was like the, the big deal back then. I was super psyched to get my first custom board. It came out a little bit thicker than what I would want back then, but in the, at the time, you know, these were like super full rails. It almost, I mean, if you look at it now, if I'm looking at it, it almost has kind of like, almost a laser zappish or a blasters kind of tail design. It's a double wing swallow. This was kind of a period where thrusters were just kind of coming into their own. It was 1984. So this was a, I would say for me, this was a transition board, transitioning into figuring it all out. This board is super unique to me because in 1997, I was working for uh, Billabong and I was also, um, Ryan Hurley's junior guard instructor and I asked Bob, I said, hey, I want you to shape me a board. And he wasn't shaping a lot of boards at the time, he was super busy with Billabong. But he said, yeah, he said, you know what, Kurt, I can't make you like a thin, narrow board like what you ride, but I've got this old um, ra a board I shaped rabbit, a little hot stuff, and I still got the template, and I'll make the template and make it twin fin, because it was a twin fin. And I was like, psyched, because I love twin fins. And I'm like, yeah, so, this is actually what they're doing the rav fours now this is like i, I want to say it's one of the first ones that he did off the template but i could be totally wrong but he did do this one for me in 1997 and it's it's pretty much a traditional twin outline like the old like the mrs um you know the big fat donkey ear fins you know single wing swallow tail and this board was just, this board worked insane. I, I remember I took this to a point break in mainland Mexico and just doing like arcing turns on it and just loving it. Just, I even, I even uh, stripped a couple NSSAs on this thing. But it's interesting that years, 
years later, he, um, they started doing the RAV4, which is on the template of, uh, of the Rabbit Hot Stuff board, which is the next board. So this is the RAV4 Hurley, Hurley Stacy. Um, I think Jeff Hurley sh uh, shapes them too, along with Bob. This is essentially the next decade level of the RAV4. These, were, these have been out for a while. I know they were making like some of the pro riders these boards and um, it really struck my curiosity because I knew it. I, I got a twin from Bob in 97 off the hot stuff template and that was the whole idea with these boards except for they made them a thruster style and I first tried it with the glass on fins and they were pretty small fins and the middle fin was a little too far up for me so I actually had another uh, a glasser buddy of mine put in FCS and rode it as a quad and actually rode really well uh, with a quad set up in a little like Slater football fin. Yeah, I dig it. Wasn't like I ever intended to be a collector. I don't really consider myself a collector, but I guess I am because I have a collection, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I don't know if I'm, on, I'm, I'm a hoarder, you know, I'm uh, just like reminiscing back in the day of stuff or what. So I guess I, yeah, I guess I am a collector and I'm just in denial. <laughs>